thank you for staying with Republic. Our non-stop rolling coverage as uh, I stand outside East Track, that is uh, the ISTRO Telemetry and Tracking uh, Command uh, Center. And uh, our guests who continue to stay with us on the broadcast as we are building up to that big moment when India is uh, attempting to make a soft landing on the moon through the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Abhijit Chavra, astrophysicist, and Mr. Kuran, uh, Kavinder Kurana, Managing Director of Tesla Power USA. Uh, Abhijit, if I could come to you, uh, you know, to really talk about the futuristic vision and the larger aim that uh, humans today are looking at. Because, uh, you know, here on the ground, naysayers would like to push the narrative, why such an expensive mission? Why spend so much money towards a mission like this? Chandrayaan 2 wasn't a success. And those are the kind of, uh, you know, statements that they would want to make. But the fact remains that we do understand that resources on Earth uh, are only in limited uh, the quantities and we do need to explore the possibility of life outside of the earth uh, th through missions like this uh, uh, the idea is to uh, discover uh, whether life is possible on the moon how is it that we need to expand that thought so we have to understand what motivates space exploration what makes nations invest so much money into exploring the the space, the moon, Mars, and all that. So uh, historically, the the space exploration has been driven by a by a mixture of factors. One obviously is scientific curiosity, but more than that, it's about national prestige, and even more than that, it's about geopolitics. It's about uh, acquiring new lands and resources, essentially. So right now, there's this new space race that's going on, Space Race 2.0, and, and the, the major nations are participating in it, the major space powers. There is this big concerted rush to get back to the moon because the moon is extremely rich in lots of valuable resources. For example, you have helium-3 that is believed to be abundantly uh, present in the lunar soil, the, the regolith of the moon. It's going to be an excellent fuel for future fusion reactors, nuclear reactors. That's one. There is water in the, in the, in right. the polar regions of the moon. Right. So, right. Right. I'm uh, sorry I'm interrupting there, Mr. Chavra, but I'd quickly like to uh, take our viewers across uh, this latest tweet uh, that has been put out by ISRO on the Chandrayaan-3 mission that reads, and I quote, All set to initiate the automatic landing sequence awaiting the arrival of lander module at the designated point around 544, that is 1744 hours IST. Upon receiving the ALS command, the lander module activates the throttle-able engines for powered descent. The mission operations team will keep confirming the sequential execution of commands. The live telecast of operations at MOX begins at uh, 172000 hours uh, IST. Now, so that's the latest tweet that is just coming in uh, from ISRO. Mr. Chavra, if you would like to reflect on this, uh, certainly seeming all is on track. Yes, uh, thus far everything seems to be on track and we hope that it continues to be on track and we are able to make a good uh, soft landing in uh, about four or five hours time, yes. So thus far all good. And if you would like me all to right, continue... Not sure the, the... if uh, Mr. Chavra is still there, but... Uh... I'm still there, yes. Yes, Mr. Chavra, please speak to us. Yes, uh, so I was making the, you had asked me the previous question about why space exploration happens. There are so many resources on the moon that are valuable for nations. First of all, there is water, uh, which is present in the, in the in the polar regions, which is obviously great for space exploration. It's it's also great for breaking down into, into rocket fuel, oxygen and hydrogen. Then you have rare earth minerals. There are lots of resources. Eventually in the next, uh, by the 2030s, so the major space powers are going to have permanent stations on the moon either robotics uh, outposts or human stations and eventually at the first opportunity the major nations are going to stake claim on lands and resources on the moon so this is the beginning of the the geopolitics of the next frontier which is space which is the moon eventually even mars 
So that's the real reason why uh, space exploration happens, and, that, and that's why nations invest so much money and resources into making sure that they are not left behind. They are at the top. So if India nails the current uh, today's moon landing, then we're going to be among the top four nations in the world which have this technology, this ability to soft land on um, on the moon or on uh, on, a, on on a body that is not the Earth. That's going to be uh, great for India, but it's it's. Uh, we have to remember that this is not the end of things. This is just one step in a long journey. You had asked the uh, uh, distinguished gentleman previously about what next, right? So what next is that we need to continue on this journey. We need to invest more mm -hmm. in space. We need to ensure that we have larger, more powerful rockets. We are not doing that for some reason. We need to invest in, uh, you know, uh, re re reusable rocket technology. We need to invest in a human spaceflight program. And we need to make sure that whatever success we gain we keep on building on it we just don't use it as a simple technology demonstrator we have to compete we have to have bigger ambitions the only thing that's keeping isro back right now is the budget we need larger budget for isro the chandrayaan 3 mission yes has a budget of 75 million dollars which is less than most hollywood movies so if we had more money for testing and all that, we would... And mm -hmm. you know, the uh, Chandrayaan 2 happened in 2019. We have taken four years for the next mission. I, I was hoping it would happen within six months to one year. We have the ability to do, the, to do that. We don't need four years to test things out. It's because of budgetary constraints that, the, the, that everything is moving at a slower pace. So we need political will and we need the budget that is given to ISRO and to space exploration to take our nation forward and not just do things because we can do it, but really compete at the highest level.